The spinal cord. The spinal cord is an anteroposteriorly flattened cylindrical continuation of the medulla, extending from the cranial border of the first cervical vertebra to the first or second lumbar vertebra. Thus, the spinal cord of the adult does not fill the whole vertebral canal, but ends in a conical structure, the conus medullaris. The pial covering continues as a thread-like filament, the phylum terminal, anchoring the conus medullaris to the coccyx. The spinal cord is fixed also to the lateral wall of the dural covering by tooth-like extensions of pia, the denticulate ligaments, located equidistant between the ventral and dorsal roots of each spinal nerve. Although the spinal cord extends only to L1 or L2 vertebral levels, the dural covering continues to line the entire extent of the vertebral canal, creating a large, fluid-filled subarachnoid space, the lumbar cistern, used for spinal fluid taps and lumbar punctures. The lumbar cistern contains, in addition to the phylum terminal and NSF, the cauda equini, root filaments of lumbar, and sacral spinal nerves, which must pass from the spinal cord to the intervertebral foramina of their destination. The spinal cord, in cross-section, displays the peripheral white matter, with the central gray matter arranged in a characteristic H-shaped configuration. The horizontal crossbar of the H is represented by the dorsal and ventral gray commissures, posterior and anterior to the ependymaligned central canal, respectively. The legs of the H are represented by the ventral and dorsal horns. The ventral horns house the motor neurons, whose axons leave the spinal cord as ventral rootlets. Sensory fibers enter the spinal cord as dorsal rootlets via the dorsal horns. Internuncial cell bodies occupy the dorsal gray column, whereas, at thoracic levels, T1 L2, the intermediolateral cell column houses all presynaptic sympathetic cell bodies. The right and left sides of the spinal cord are partly separated from each other by the dorsal median septum and the somewhat wider ventral median fissure, neither of which penetrates the gray matter. Each half of the spinal cord is an apparent mirror image of the other, and the white matter of each half contains groups of nerve fiber tracts, or fasciculi, ascending or descending in the cord. Cranial nerve modalities represent the seven specific functional components transmitted within the cranial nerves, including afferent, sensory, as well as efferent, motor, modalites. Although each cranial nerve may transmit one to several modalities, none carry all of them, thus, each cranial nerve possesses specific modalities that are responsible for receiving sensory input from receptors or delivering output from it s motor component. An additional component, general proprioception, GP, is generally understood, if not specified, as sensory input from within the muscles innervate by those cranial nerves. Motor modalities, general somatic efferent, GSE, represents motor innervation to skeletal muscles developed from somates. General visceral efferent, GVE, represents motor fibers that innervate smooth muscles, cardiac muscles, and glands. Special visceral efferent save, represents motor fibers to skeletal muscles of branchiomeric origin, pharyngeal arch origin. General visceral afferent, GVA, represents general sensation from the viscera, Jenner ally perceived as pressure and slash or pain. Special somatic afferent, SSA, represents special sensation from the eye, vision, and the ear, auditory and equilibrium. Special visceral afferent, SVA, represents visceral sensations of smell, olfaction, and taste, gustatory. Twelve pairs of cranial nerves originate in the brain, leave its surface, and pass through certain foramina of the skull to be distributed in and about the head and neck. One cranial nerve, the vagus, continues into the thorax and abdomen to innervate some of the viscera. The cranial nerves are named and numbered sequentially with Roman numerals, progressing rost rally to caudally, I olfactory. Two optic. Three oculomotor. Four trochlear. V trigeminal. Six abducens.
7 facial, 8 vestibular cochlear, 9 glossopharyngeal, X vagus, 11 accessory, 12 hypoglossal. Three figures appearing earlier in the book can be reviewed to observe the relative positions of the cranial nerves emerging from the brain, and their relative positions in the floor of the cranial vault. As explained earlier, peripheral nerves consist of several nerve fiber types specific for their function. Typically, each peripheral nerve contains somatic and visceral components, each with afferent and efferent fibers. Peripheral nerves emanating from the brain, known as cranial nerves, are more complex than those arising from the spinal cord, since these nerves serve special sensory functions such as hearing, seeing, smelling, and tasting in addition to supplying special skeletal muscles of branchiomeric origin. The cranial nerves, then, carry certain components in addition to the general somatic and general visceral components carried by spinal nerves, designated as special somatic afferent, special visceral afferent, and special visceral afferent. General somatic A weren't GSA, general sensation in function. For example, the trigeminal nerve serves much of the skin and the mucous membranes of the face, whereas the facial, glossopharyngeal, and vagus nerves serve the area of the ear with general sensation. General somatic E weren't GSE general motor in function to skeletal muscles. This grouping is carried by the oculomotor, trochlear, abducent, and hypoglossal nerves innervating musculature derived from somits. General visceral A weren't, GVA, general sensation from the viscera included in the facial, glossopharyngeal, and vagus nerves. General visceral efferent IGVE, visceral motor, parasympathetic, to the viscera. Only four cranial nerves transmit parasympathetic fibers, the oculomotor, facial, glossopharyngeal, and vagus nerves. Special somatic afferent SSA special sensory in function from the eye and ear. The cranial nerves carrying this component are the optic and vestibulocochlear nerves. Special visceral A weren't SVA, special sensory in function from the viscera. These fibers are associated with the special senses of smell, carried in the olfactory nerve, and taste, transmitted in the facial, glossopharyngeal, and vagus nerves. An easy way to remember the difference between SSA and SVA fibers is that for SVA fibers to be activated, the motor 1L has to be dissolved in a fluid, saliva or mucus. Special viscerally weren't save special motor to the branchiomeric musculatures. This component is carried to the muscles derived from the pharyngeal arches and is transmitted by the nerves of those arches, the trigeminal, facial, glossopharyngeal, accessory, contributions to the pharyngeal plexus, and vagus nerves. As with the typical spinal nerve, cell bodies of afferent nerve fibers of cranial nerves are located in sensory ganglia outside the central nervous system, that is, outside the brain. Central processes of these sensory modalities, general somatic afferent, GSA, represents general sensation, touch, pressure, temperature, pain, from the skin about the anterior face and lateral head. Fibers pass via the cranial nerves into the brain to terminate on neurons that relay impulses for processing, sorting out, and coordinating the information before initiation of a motor response that may or may not be at a conscious level. All of the interconnections and workings of the brain are extremely complicated and beyond the scope of this text. Readers who want more information about this subject are referred to standard textbooks of neuroanatomy. Each of the 12 cranial nerves is described in the following sections, including information on the location of the cell bodies, the components carried, connections with other nerves, and finally the distribution and function. A summary of this information is presented in tabular form in one olfactory nerve, SVA is the only modality carried by the olfactory nerve. Cell bodies of the olfactory nerve, the nerve of smell, are found in the olfactory mucosa situated over the superior nasal concha. Axons of the olfactory nerve pass through the cribriform plate of the ethmoid bone to terminate in the olfactory bulb, which is connected to the brain by the olfactory tract, technically a part of the brain. Two optic nerve, SSA is the only modality carried by the optic nerve.
cell bodies of the optic nerve, the nerve of sight, are located in the ganglionic layer of cells composing the retina. Axons of these cells are gathered into bundles that leave the bulb of the eye as the optic nerve, passing posteriorly through the orbit to exit through the optic foramen. Here the axons join the optic nerve of the opposite side, forming the optic chiasma. Optic tracts continue from the chiasma to enter the base of the brain near the cerebral peduncle. Anosmia, anosmia results following a unilateral lesion either within the olfactory epithelium or within the olfactory nerve, causing the patient to experience complete loss of the sense of smell on the side of the lesion. Oculomotor nerve, GSE, GBE, and GP, general proprioception to the extraocular muscles for kinesthetic sense, are the modalities carried by the oculomotor nerve. The oculomotor nerve serves all of the extrinsic muscles of the eye, excluding the superior oblique and the lateral rectus muscles, with general somatic efferent innervation. A specialized group of autonomic motor cells in the oculomotor nucleus within the brain is termed the edinger westphi nucleus. These are preganglionic parasympathetic neurons whose fibers are destined for the ciliary ganglion within the orbit. Postganglionic fibers from the ciliary ganglion pass to the orb via short ciliary nerves and onto the ciliary body and sphincter pupillae muscles of the eye. The oculomotor nerve exits the brain near the medial side of the cerebral peduncle, passes through the free and attached borders of the tentorium cerebelli, and then passes through the lateral wall of the cavernous sinus to enter the superior orbital fissure for distribution. While in the cavernous sinus, contributions from the carotid plexus are communicated to the oculomotor nerve. These communications are the postganglionic sympathetic fibers from the superior cervical ganglion destined for the dilatator pupillae muscle of the eye. Once in the orbit, the oculomotor nerve divides into superior and inferior divisions, facilitating innervation of the extraocular muscles. The divisions is suspended from the inferior division by the parasympathetic motor root of the ganglion. Additional communications to the ganglion are from the nasociliary nerve, a branch of the ophthalmic division of the trigeminal nerve. These communications are purely sensory, passing through the ganglion without synapsing there. Thus, these somatic sensory nerves reach their destination in the orb by way of the short ciliary nerves. Postganglionic sympathetic fibers may also communicate with the ganglion in a fashion similar to that of the nasociliary nerve, however, these sympathetic fibers are destined for the dilatator pupillae muscle. Proprioceptive fibers of the extraocular muscles are carried in the oculomotor nerve, then transmitted to the ophthalmic division of the trigeminal nerve to join it in the orbit, or via communications while it passes through the walls of the cavernous sinus. Terminations of these fibers are described in the section on the trigeminal nerve. Myopia and hyperopia, changes in the longitudinal dimension of the optical axis will cause images to be focused either anterior, myopia, or posterior, hyperopia, to the retina. This is usually the result of changes in the refractive elements of the eye, notably the cornea, which experiences a slight change in shape. There may also occur an alteration in the dimension of the orb. Often, both processes occur as a function of aging. These conditions can be diagnosed and treated with prescription ground glasses that can optically correct for the alteration in the longitudinal dimension of the optical axis. Multiple sclerosis, MS multiple sclerosis is one of the demyelinating diseases that affects the optic nerve but not the other cranial nerves. This is because the myelin surrounding the optic nerves is produced by glial cells rather than by Schwann cells, as in other cranial nerves. Detached retina, the 10-layered retina is loosely attached to the choroid layer of the orb and is retained in that position by the vitreous body. Sudden jolts absorbed in the orbit may detach the retina, causing a medical emergency. The detached retina is sightless but sight can usually be restored by surgical reattachment of the retina. Cataract, cataract is an age-related condition where the lens loses its transparency and becomes clouded, causing blurred vision. It is the major cause of poor vision and blindness throughout the world. Modern techniques now permit surgical placement of plastic lenses, resulting in restored vision. Presbyopia Presbyopia is associated with aging. It results from the inability of the eye to focus on close objects, 
accommodation, which is related to the lens becoming less elastic, thus light cannot be focused properly on the retina. Oculomotor nerve injury, injury to the oculomotor nerve will result in palsy on the ipsilateral side with dilated pupil and ptosis. Additionally, the bulb of the eye will turn down and out with a concomitant inability to move the eye either up or down, moreover, the pupil lari reflex will be lost. The trochlear nerve, GSE and GP, general proprioception fibers to the extraocular muscle for kinesthetic sense, are the modalities carried by the trochlear nerve. The trochlear nerve, the smallest of the cranial nerves, supplies the superior oblique muscle of the eye with motor innervation. This is the only cranial nerve originating on the dorsal surface of the brain stem. From there, it passes around the midbrain to pierce the tentorial dura, thus entering the cavernous sinus. While coursing through the wall of the cavernous sinus, the trochlear nerve communicates with the carotid plexus and the ophthalmic division of the trigeminal nerve. Proprioceptive fibers from the superior oblique muscle are thought to communicate with the ophthalmic nerve at that point. On entering the orbit through the superior orbital fissure, the nerve terminates in the superior oblique muscle, which it provides with motor innervation. The trigeminal nerve, GSA, SAVE, and GP, general proprioception fibers to the muscles of mastication for kinesthetic sense, are the modalities carried by the trigeminal nerve. The largest of the cranial nerves, the trigeminal nerve serves much of the face, the teeth, and supporting structures, most of the anterior portion of the oral cavity, and the mucous membranes of the head with cutaneous sensation. Also, it provides motor innervations to the muscles of mastication. The nerve has two roots emanating from the pons. The larger, sensory root, which lies lateral to the motor root, contains the central processes of the neurons whose cell bodies are found in the trigeminal semilunar, ganglion, the sensory ganglion of the trigeminal nerve. This ganglion is located under the cover of the dura in a pocket, the mechal cave, on the trigeminal impression located near the apex of the petros portion of the temporal bone. Peripheral processes of the sensory neurons located in the flat, semilunar shaped ganglion are gathered in three separate bundles. These bundles leave the ganglion as the ophthalmic, maxillary, and mandibular divisions of the trigeminal nerve. The motor root courses beneath the trigeminal ganglion, proceeds medial to the sensory root, and the two leave the skull via the foramen ovale and then join each other to form the mandibular division of the trigem 1 NAL nerve. Thus, the mandibular division is mixed in function. The ophthalmic and maxillary divisions are purely sensory, and they leave the cranial vault via the superior orbital fissure and foramen rotundum, respectively. The four parasympathetic ganglia of the head are in close association with the trigeminal nerve, although, functionally, these ganglia are not part of the trigeminal nerve. Postganglionic parasympathetic fibers arising in these ganglia are transmitted to the structures they serve by joining branches of the trigeminal nerve for distribution. Trochlear nerve injury, the trochlear nerve provides motor innervation only to the superior oblique muscle. When this cranial nerve is injured, the superior oblique muscle on the ipsilateral side will be paralyzed, causing the eyeball to rotate outward, resulting in double vision ophthalmic nerve, GSA is the only modality carried by the ophthalmic division of the trigeminal nerve. The ophthalmic nerve supplies the bulb and conjunctiva of the eye, the lacrimal gland, the skin of the forehead and nose, and the mucous membranes of the paranasal sinuses with sensory innervation. The ophthalmic nerve leaves the superior aspect of the trigeminal ganglion, then lies in the lateral wall of the cavernous sinus as it courses to the orbit. Along the way, tentorial branches are supplied to the tentorium. Just before entering the orbit through the superior orbital fissure, the nerve divides into three separate nerves, the lacrimal, frontal, and nasociliary nerves. In its course, the ophthalmic nerve communicates with the carotid plexus in the cavernous sinus and with other cranial nerves represented in the orbit. However, discussion of these communications is not warranted here. Lacrimal nerve, the lacrimal nerve, the smallest branch of the ophthalmic division, runs along the lateral rectus muscle distributing to the lacrimal gland and adjacent conjunctiva.
it then exits the orbit to be distributed to the skin of the lateral aspect of the upper eyelid. While in the orbit, it communicates with the zygomaticotemporal branch of the zygomatic nerve of the maxillary division of the trigeminal nerve, which is carrying postganglionic parasympathetic fibers communicated to it from the pterygopalatin ganglion. These parasympathetic fibers are then transmitted to the lacrimal gland via the lacrimal nerve, thus providing it with secretomotor innervation. Frontal nerve, the frontal nerve, the largest branch of the ophthalmic nerve, divides shortly after entering the superior aspect of the orbit into a smaller supratrochlear and a larger supraorbital nerve. The former passes medial to the latter as the nerves course anteriorly above the levator palpebri superioris muscle. The supratrochlear nerve bends to pass superior to the pulley of the superior oblique muscle. Here it provides sensory innervation to the conjunctiva and skin of the medial aspect of the upper eyelid before leaving the orbit to turn upward to supply the skin over the forehead. The supraorbital nerve continues forward to exit the orbit at the supraorbital notch. While passing the notch, it sends a filament lie of the sphenoid bone and enters the cavernous sinus, where it receives communications from the carotid plexus. Upon entering the superior orbital fissure, the nerve courses to the lateral rectus muscle, supplying it with motor innervation. This is the sole function of the abducens nerve. Abducens nerve injury, the abducens nerve provides motor innervation to the lateral rectus muscle. When affected, the muscle on the ipsilateral side will be paralyzed, causing the eyeball to deviate medially, resulting in double vision. The facial nerve, save, GVE, SVA, GVA, and GSA are the modalities carried by the facial nerve. The facial nerve exhibits several modalities because its branches serve structures within the temporal bone, deep face, oral cavity, and the superficial face. The modalities carried by the facial nerve include, special visceral efferent, general visceral efferent, special visceral afferent, general visceral afferent, and general somatic afferent. The components of the facial nerve and their functions are as follows. Special visceral motor component serves all of the muscles derived from the second pharyngeal arch, including the muscles of facial expression, the buccinator, platysma, and those of the scalp and external ear, the stapedius, posterior belly of the degastric, and stylohyoid muscles. General sensory component supplies the external acoustic meatus. Visceral sensory component supplies the soft palate and some of the pharynx. Special sensory component is for taste to the anterior two-thirds of the tongue. Parasympathetic component affecting secretomotor function is supplied to the lacrimal, nasal, palatine, submandibular, and sublingual glands. The nerve possesses two roots, a large motor root and a smaller root, termed the nervous intermedius, containing the special sensory fibers for taste, parasympathetic fibers, and general sensory fibers. The two roots emerge from the brain between the pons and the inferior cerebellar peduncle. These roots enter the internal acoustic meatus along with the vestibulocochlear nerve, but separate from it as the two roots enter the petros portion of the temporal bone in a chamber of its own, the facial canal. Near the tympanic cavity, the facial nerve takes an abrupt turn inferiorly to exit the skull through the stylomastoid foramen. Located at this turn where the two roots fuse is the geniculate ganglion, the sensory ganglion of the facial nerve. Several branches arise from the nerve as it courses through the temporal bone, including the greater petrosal nerve from the geniculate ganglion, the nerve to the stapedius muscle, and the corda tympani nerve. Greater petrosal nerve, arising from the geniculate ganglion is the greater petrosal nerve, which carries preganglionic parasympathetic fibers destined for the pterygopalatin ganglion along with sensory fibers for the soft palate and pharynx. The facial nerve leaves the petros portion of the temporal bone via the hiatus of the facial canal near the foramen lacerum and then enters the pterygoid canal, vidian canal, of the sphenoid bone. Here it is joined by the deep petrosal nerve, a postganglionic sympathetic nerve arising from the carotid plexus whose cell bod IES are located in the superior cervical ganglion. The combined nerve, known as the nerve of the pterygoid canal, vidian nerve, passes through the same named canal in the sphenoid bone to gain access to the pterygopalatin fossa, where it joins the pterygopalatin gungolion. 
preganglionic parasympathetic fibers synapse on postganglionic parasympathetic cell bodies housed within the pterygopalatin ganglion. Fibers of these postganglionic parasympathetic neurons are communicated to nerves branching from the maxillary division of the trigeminal nerve for distribution to the lacrimal gland, as well as to small glands of the nasal cavity, pharynx, and palate. The sympathetic component of the vidian nerve does not synapse in the pterygopalatin ganglion, instead, these postganglionic fibers are distributed in the same fashion as the postganglionic parasympathetic fibers. The parasympathetic fibers are secretomotor in function, whereas the sympathetic fibers function mainly in vasoconstriction. Some visceral sensory fibers from the geniculate ganglion travel along with the greater petrosal nerve to be distributed ultimately by branches of the maxillary division of the trigeminal nerve to the area of the soft palate via the lesser palatine nerve. Nerve to the stapedius muscle, the nerve to the stapedius muscle, arising from the facial nerve as it descends across the tympanum, provides motor fibers to that muscle. Corda tympani nerve, the corda tympani nerve arises from the facial nerve trunk just before the trunk's exit from the stylomastoid foramen. The corda tympani courses cranial ward in a canal of its own, diverging away from the main nerve, bending to pass over the tympanic membrane and across the manubrium of the malleus. It leaves the tympanic cavity to enter a canal in the petrotympanic fissure, then exits the skull at the spine of the sphenoid bone. The corda tympani nerve, which may receive a communication from the otic ganglion, joins the lingual branch of the mandibular division of the trigeminal nerve for distribution. It contains special sensory fibers destined for taste buds on the anterior two-thirds of the tongue and preganglionic parasympathetic fibers destined for the submandibular ganglion. The submandibular ganglion, suspended by short nerve filaments from the lingual nerve as it passes the hyoglossus muscle, receives the preganglionic parasympathetic fibers of the corda tympani nerve via the parasympathetic root. Postganglionic parasympathetic fibers from the submandibular ganglion pass to the submandibular gland or re-enter the lingual nerve to be distributed to the sublingual gland and minor salivary glands in the floor of the mouth, providing them with secretomotor innervation. Sympathetic stimulation of the salivary glands is accomplished by postganglionic sympathetic fibers accompanying the arteries serving the glands. The function of this stimulation is generally to elicit vasoconstriction. Beyond the origin of the corda tympani nerve, the facial nerve exits the skull through the stylomastoid foramen. There, it gives rise to the posterior auricular nerve and the nerves to the posterior degastric and stylohyoid muscles. It then passes into the retromandibular fossa to enter the substance of the parotid gland to form the parotid plexus. Posterior auricular nerve, as the facial nerve exits the stylomastoid foramen, the posterior auricular nerve arises from it to pass superiorly between the auricle and the mastoid process. It divides into occipital and auricular branches after communicating with the auricular branch of the vagus nerve and great auricular and lesser occipital nerves of the cervical plexus. The auricular branch supplies motor innervation to the posterior auricular muscle of the ear and to some of its intrinsic muscles. The occipital branch courses posteriorly to supply the occipitalis muscle with motor innervation. Nerve to the posterior belly of the degastric muscle. The nerve to the posterior belly of the degastric muscle arises from the trunk of the facial nerve near the stylomastoid foramen and enters the muscle near its midbelly, providing it with motor innervation. Nerve to stylohyoid muscle. The nerve to the stylohyoid muscle arises from the facial nerve in a similar fashion to or in common with the nerve to the posterior degastric. The nerve to the stylohyoid muscle then enters the muscle at mid belly, providing it with motor innervation. Parotid plexus. After entering the parotid gland, the facial nerve divides into temporofacial and cervicofacial divisions, which form the parotid plexus. From there emerge the branches supplying motor innervation to the muscles of facial expression. These terminal branches are named for the regions they supply, usually dividing into five major branches from the plexus, temporal, zygomatic, buccal, mandibular, and cervical branches. Space does not permit a repeat of the complete descriptions of each branch's distribution or of the muscles served by each branch, other than to state that, generally, the branch serves facial muscles originating in the area of the nerve branch.
the interested reader is referred back to Chapter 8 for a discussion of the distribution of the branches of the parotid plexus. Note that branches of the facial nerve communicate freely with all of the terminal branches of the trigeminal nerve. These communications, for example, those between the auriculotemporal nerve and the facial nerve, apparently serve to facilitate distribution of the sensory branches of the trigeminal nerve about the face. The vestibulocochlear nerve, the nerve of hearing and balance, the vestibulocochlear nerve, is composed of two separate sets of fibers. The vestibular nerve for balance and the cochlear nerve for hearing are joined as a common nerve entering the internal acoustic meatus with the facial nerve. These two cranial nerves separate after entering the meatus as the vestibulocochlear nerve approaches the area of its destination within the inner ear. The vestibulocochlear nerve divides, sending the cochlear nerve into the laterally oriented cochlear apparatus and the vestibular nerve medially into the vestibular apparatus. Cochlear nerve the cochlear nerve has its peripheral processes in the organ of corti, located in the membranous labyrinth, and its cell bodies are located in the spiral ganglion of the cochlea, which is housed in the modiolus of the cochlea. Central processes of the spiral ganglion become the cochlear division of the nerve responsible for the sense of hearing bell palsy. Damage to the facial nerve, or its accidental analgesia during dental procedures, results in paralysis of the muscles of the affected side. Damage may occur during surgical involvement of the parotid gland, infection of the middle ear, knife wounds, or at birth during forceps delivery. Paralysis of the facial muscles results in ptosis of the eye, upper eyelid drooping, depression of the corner of the mouth with accompanying oozing of saliva, speech disorder, especially involving labial sounds, lack of muscle tone, and a sagging, distorted face. Bell palsy affect all of the ipsilateral muscles about the face as well as other muscles that develop from the second pharyngeal arch. Because of this fact, patients affected with bell palsy have hyperacusis, loss of corneal blink, as well as loss of taste from the ipsilateral side of the anterior tongue. Conductive hearing loss, conductive hearing loss results from a defect in the conduction of sound waves from the tympanic membrane through the bony ossicles to the oval window of the cochlea. Conditions that may contribute to conduction deafness include buildup of cerumen, ear wax, perforation of the tympanic membrane, otis media, middle ear cavity infection, and otosclerosis, excessive growth of bone around the oval window causing impaired movement of the stapes. Nerve deafness, Nerve deafness results from a lesion within the nerves transmitting impulses to the brain from the spiral organ of corti. Other causes include certain diseases, drug abuse, and prolonged exposure to loud noises. Meniere disease Meniere disease is related to excess fluid in the endolymphatic duct affecting the vestibular mechanism of the vestibulocochlear nerve. This disease is characterized by hearing loss, vertigo, nausea, tinnitus, and vomiting. Drugs can be used for treatment, but in severe cases surgery is required. Otitis media, the auditory tube permits the spread of infection from the nasal cavity into the middle ear cavity. This condition, otitis media, resulting from acute infection, may result in the rupture of the eardrum and slash or the infection may pass into the mastoid air cells. Antibiotics are used to treat this condition. Auditory tube obstructions often lead to middle ear infections, especially in children. Otosclerosis, occasionally, the stapes becomes immobilized as a result of bony deposits around the oval window. This condition, known as otosclerosis, is a major cause of hearing loss, especially in older adults. It is usually correctable by surgical procedures. Both otitis media and otosclerosis, if left untreated, will result in deafness. Vestibular nerve, the vestibular nerve cell bodies are located in the vestibular ganglion within the internal auditory meatus of the temporal bone. Peripheral processes of these neurons divide to enter the vestibular mechanism, including the three semicircular canals. Central processes of these neurons become the vestibular division of the vestibulocochlear nerve responsible for the sense of balance. The glossopharyngeal nerve, SVA, GVA, GVE, GSA, and SAVE are the modalities carried in the glossopharyngeal nerve. The modalities within the glossopharyngeal nerve include, 
special visceral efferent, general visceral efferent, special visceral afferent, general visceral afferent, and general somatic afferent. Special visceral efferent. Because the glossopharyngeal nerve is the nerve of the third pharyngeal arch, it serves the only muscle derived from this arch, the stylopharyngeus muscle general visceral ure and parasympathetic, supply the parotid gland and other minor salivary glands in the mucous membrane in and about the posterior tongue and adjacent pharynx. Special visceral afferents are distributed to the taste buds located on the posterior one-third of the tongue, as well as to those located in the circumvallate papillae. General visceral afferents supply the posterior one-third of the tongue, the fosses, the palatine tonsils, and the pharynx. Other general visceral sensory fibers supply the carotid sinus with blood pressure receptors as well as to chemoreceptors located within the carotid body. The latter is a sensory function performed in conjunction with the vagus nerve. General somatic aurents supply cutaneous sensation about the ear. The glossopharyngeal nerve leaves the brain as three or four rootlets adjacent to the vagus nerve along the medulla between the olive and the inferior cerebellar peduncle. The rootlets unite to exit the skull through the jugular foramen in company with the vagus and accessory nerves. Housed in the groove within the jugular foramen are the superior and inferior ganglia of the glossopharyngeal nerve, containing the cell bodies of the sensory fibers. While passing through the jugular foramen, this nerve communicates with the facial nerve, the auricular branch and superior ganglion of the vagus nerve, and the superior cervical sympathetic ganglion. Nerve and possibly some fibers from the greater petrosal nerve communicated through the tympanic plexus. Postganglionic parasympathetic fibers leave the otic ganglion and are communicated to the auriculotemporal nerve for distribution to the parotid gland, providing it with secretomotor innervation. Tympanic nerve The tympanic nerve arises from the inferior ganglion of the glossopharyngeal nerve and enters the petrose portion of the temporal bone, traveling to the tympanic cavity. Here it forms the tympanic plexus with fibers from the carotid plexus and the greater petrosal nerve. Branches from the tympanic plexus serve sensory functions to the mucous membranes of the eardrum, oval, and round windows, mastoid air cells, and auditory tube. The tympanic nerve emerges from the tympanic plexus as the lesser petrosal nerve, providing preganglionic parasympathetic fibers to the otic ganglion, which it reaches by leaving the skull at the fissure between the petrose portion of the temporal bone and the greater wing of the sphenoid bone. The otic ganglion, described in the section on the mandibular division of the trigeminal nerve, lies just outside the foramen ovale, immediately behind the mandibular nerve. This ganglion receives preganglionic parasympathetic fibers from the lesser petrosal unilateral lesion of the glossopharyngeal nerve outside brainstem, Unilateral lesion of the glossopharyngeal nerve outside of the brainstem will cause loss of taste from the posterior one-third of the tongue, loss of salivation from the parotid gland on the ipsilateral side, loss of gag reflex, and loss of carotid sinus reflex carotid sinus nerve, the nerve to the carotid sinus arises as a small filament from the glossopharyngeal nerve subsequent to nerve communications at the jugular foramen. This branch descends along the internal carotid artery, ending in the bifurcation of the common carotid artery. This nerve functions as a baroreceptor within the carotid sinus. On its way to the carotid sinus, the nerve communicates with pharyngeal branch, ES, of the vagus and branches from the superior cervical ganglion, postganglionic sympathetic fibers. Glossopharyngeal and vagus nerves transmit afferent fibers from the chemoreceptors within the carotid body. Nerve to the stylopharyngeus muscle, as the glossopharyngeal nerve courses to the posterior pharyngeal wall, a nerve to the stylopharyngeus muscle arises to supply that muscle. Pharyngeal branches, the main trunk of the glossopharyngeal nerve terminates as several pharyngeal branches to enter the posterior pharyngeal wall. Some of these branches continue to the tongue as lingual branches providing general sensation to the posterior one-third of the tongue and special sensory fibers to the taste buds on that portion of the tongue as well as to those of the circumvallate papillae. Other branches penetrate the pharyngeal wall as tonsillar branches, communicating with the lesser palatine nerve of the maxillary division of the trigeminal nerve, to supply the soft palate, pharyrex, and fosses with general sensation. Pharyngeal plexus, 
other fibers of the glossopharyngeal nerve join with pharyngeal branches of the vagus nerve and branches from the superior cervical ganglion to form the pharyngeal plexus, located on the wall of the middle pharyngeal constrictor muscle. Branches from this plexus penetrate the wall of the pharynx and supply all of the muscles of the pharynx, except the stylopharyngeus, and soft palate, except the tensor villi palatini, with motor innervation and adjacent mucous membranes with sensory innervation. Although the following information was presented in Chapter 16, it is appropriate to present it again because there is confusion related to the function of the individual nerves making up the pharyngeal plexus. Glossopharyngeal contributions to the pharyngeal plexus are sensory, whereas the vagal branches are motor. However, these motor branches are believed to consist mainly of fibers from the cranial portion of the accessory nerve, cranial nerve 11, which are contributed to the vagus nerve before it exits the skull. Postganglionic sympathetic fibers contributed from the superior cervical ganglion to the pharyngeal plexus are vasomotor in function. Vagus nerve GVE, SAVE, GVA, and GSA are the modalities carried in the vagus nerve. The cranial nerve having the most extensive distribution is the vagus nerve. In addition to its destinations within the head and neck, the vagus nerve also enters the thorax to serve the heart and lungs, and continues into the abdomen to supply most of the abdominal viscera. The vagus nerve possesses five modalities, namely, special visceral efferent, general somatic afferent, general visceral afferent, special visceral afferent, general visceral afferent, special visceral efferent. The vagus is the nerve of the fourth pharyngeal arch, and its recurrent laryngeal branch is the nerve of the sixth pharyngeal arch. Consequently, the vagus nerve supplies muscles developed from those arches. Muscles developing from the fourth arch include the pharyngeal constrictors and the cricothyroid muscles. Muscles developed from the sixth arch include the intrinsic muscles of the larynx. General somatic aweren fibers are provided to the skin about the ear and external acoustic meatus. General visceral aweren supplies the mucous membranes of the pharynx, larynx, esophagus, bronchi, lungs, heart, and much of the abdominal viscera. General visceral eweren supplies the smooth muscles and glands of the digestive tract from the esophagus to, and including, most of the intestines, plus the bronchi and trachea. Special visceral eweren is supplied to the base of the tongue, areopiglottic fold, and larynx. The vagus nerve exits the brain at the medulla, between the olive and the inferior cerebellar peduncle just posterior to the glossopharyngeal nerve, via a cluster of 8 to 10 rootlets that unite to exit the skull through the jugular foramen along with the glossopharyngeal and accessory nerves. This nerve possesses two sensory ganglia, the superior ganglion, housed in the jugular fossa, and the inferior, nodosal ganglion, appearing as a swelling on the nerve just after it exits the jugular foramen. Peripheral processes of the neurons in these ganglia are distributed with the vagus nerve as the sensory component. These ganglia receive communications from the glossopharyngeal, facial, accessory, and hypoglossal nerves. The sympathetic nervous system communicates via a filament from the superior cervical ganglion, and a communication also exists between the vagal ganglia and the first and second cervical nerves. The cranial root of the accessory nerve joins the vagus nerve just proximal to the inferior ganglion. Thus, the motor component to the muscles arising from the fourth and fifth pharyngeal arches, generally described as arising from the vagus nerve, are actually from this contribution to the vagus nerve by the accessory nerve. However, autonomic motor innervation to the esophagus and the structures within the thorax and abdomen attributed to the vagus arise from the dorsal motor nucleus of the vagus nerve. Before its exit from the jugular fossa the vagus nerve gives off two branches, the meningeal and auricular branches. Meningeal branch, the meningeal branch of the vagus nerve returns to the cranial vault to supply the dura in the posterior cranial fossa. Auricular branch, an auricular branch arises from the superior vagal ganglion, communicates with the glossopharyngeal nerve, and then enters the mastoid canal coursing to the facial canal. Here it communicates with the facial nerve, then exits through the tympanomastoid suture to communicate with the posterior auricular nerve before distributing to the skin of the posterior aspect of the ear and the external acoustic meatus.
vagal branches in the neck, the following sections describe the branches and distributions of the vagus nerve as it courses through the neck. Branches arising from the vagus in the neck include the pharyngeal, superior laryngeal, and superior cardiac nerves. Also located in the neck is the recurrent laryngeal nerve that arises from the vagus nerve at the thoracic inlet to recur back into the neck. Pharyngeal branches, pharyngeal branches of the vagus arise from the inferior vagal ganglion and pass over the internal carotid artery to the pharyngeal constrictor muscles, providing input to the pharyngeal plexus. From this plexus, motor innervation is supplied to the pharyngeal but not the stylopharyngeus, as well as to all muscles of the soft palate except the tensor veli palatini. Mucous membranes of the pharynx are also supplied by the pharyngeal plexus. Usually, the nerve to the carotid body originates from the pharyngeal branches. This nerve descends along the internal carotid artery to terminate in the carotid body housed in the bifurcation of the common carotid artery. Chemoreceptors detect changes in oxygen and carbon dioxide tension as well as hydrogen ion concentration in the blood at this site. As previously described, sensory fibers from the carotid body are also transmitted in the glossopharyngeal nerve. Superior laryngeal nerve, the superior laryngeal nerve arises from the vagus at the inferior end of the inferior ganglion and passes deep to the internal carotid artery, descending to the thyroid cartilage, where it divides into external and internal branches. The smaller external branch continues to descend beneath the sternothyroid muscle to enter the cricothyroid and inferior pharyngeal constrictor muscles, which it supplies with motor innervation. The larger internal branch courses over and pierces the thyrohyoid membrane. This branch supplies sensory innervation to the mucous membrane superiorly, to the base of the tongue, and to the epiglottis and the larynx as far inferiorly as the vocal folds. It is with this branch that the sensation of taste is transmitted to the brain from the base of the tongue, epiglottis, and larynx. The internal laryngeal branch also contains parasympathetic fibers to the glands associated with the mucous membranes of the regions just described. Preganglionic fibers synapse on ganglionic plex uses within the walls of the viscera served, and from there the postganglionic fibers distribute secretomotor fibers to the glands. Superior cardiac branches, as the trunk of the vagus nerve descends in the neck within the carotid sheath, between and posterior to the internal jugular vein and the internal carotid artery, superior cardiac branches are given off and descend into the thorax. The accessory nerve, save, communicated to the vagus nerve for the muscles of the pharynx and larynx, and save, assuming branchomeric origins for the sternocleidomastoid and trapezius muscles, are the modalities carried by the accessory nerve. The accessory nerve arises from two sources, the brain and the spinal cord. This nerve is described as a motor nerve, serving the sternocleidomastoid and trapezius muscles, and its cranial root is regarded as the motor portion of the vagus nerve within the head and neck, including the contribution that the vagus nerve makes to the pharyngeal plexus. The spinal portion arises from motor neurons in the first five, or more, spinal cord segments. This portion of the nerve emerges on the surface of the spinal cord to ascend into the skull via the foramen magnum to join or communicate with the cranial portion of the nerve before exiting the jugular foramen along with the vagus and glossopharyngeal nerves. The cranial portion leaves the brain very close to the vagus nerve and travels along with it to the jugular foramen. After communicating with the spinal portion, the cranial portion joins the vagus, and the spinal portion continues on to descend through the foramen. The spinal portion descends posterior to the stylohyoid and degastric muscles to enter the sternocleidomastoid muscle, which it pierces and serves before passing obliquely over the posterior triangle to terminate in and supply the trapezius muscle. Along its way, the nerve communicates with the second, third, and fourth cervical nerves. The hypoglossal nerve, GSE is the modality carried by the hypoglossal nerve. The reist caudal and the last of the cranial nerves is the hypoglossal nerve. This nerve is the motor nerve of the tongue. It arises as several rootlets from the medulla between the olive and the pyramid and, passing through the hypoglossal canal, the rootlets unite to form a single nerve. It descends deep to the internal jugular vein and internal carotid artery, and then becomes superficial to them as it crosses them at the mandible.
the hypoglossal nerve then courses over the external carotid and lingual arteries deep to the degastric and stylohyoid muscles. It enters the muscles of the tongue, which it supplies, proceeding to the ventral tip of the tongue. With the exception of the palatoglossus, innervated by the vagus via the pharyngeal plexus, the hypoglossal nerve innervates the hyoglossus, styloglossus, genioglossus, and intrinsic muscles of the tongue. The hypoglossal nerve communicates with several nerves in its root, including the pharyngeal plexus, the lingual, and the first and second cervical spinal nerves. Branches from the first and second ventral cervical spinal nerves join the hypoglossal later to exit, forming the descending loop, superior root, of the ansa cervicalis, which innervates the infrahyoid muscles.